All right, welcome back. So the title of this talk is how to cite your sources for my for my history classes. Now we're going to talk about a couple of ways in which you can do this and just basics to kind of go by as you go about the process of paper writing. I know full well not everybody who's taking a class with me is a history major. Some folks are pretty against history. Some folks have uh, you know different backgrounds and experiences when it comes to paper writing, different language gifts. There's a lot of different individuals who would come into one of our classes. And so I try to kind of keep the, the process structured so that way everybody kind of understands what they need to do going forward. All right. So first off, system. All right. What system are we going to use for citing? So two things or two systems, basically. First, if you're a history major, use what's called Chicago style or Turabian style. They're very similar. And as you proceed as a history major, both in undergrad or if you wanted to go to grad school, you're going to need to know how to do this. You won't be expected to cite in any other format but Chicago or Turabian style. So you should take the chance while you're in our class and cite Chicago style. You can find how to do that in two typical locations. Purdue University's Online Writing Lab, or OWL. Secondly, what's called the Chicago Manual of Style. They have a website. You can look it up. There's also a big book to how to do it. But again, you can look it up, Purdue's OWL, or the Chicago Manual of Style's website. If you're not a history major, the primary place or way that you want to cite is through MLA. Now, that is the accepted way that we're going to do this. And there are a few basics when it comes to how to cite primarily in MLA. All right. So again, if you're going to use Chicago style, have questions, come let me know. But we're going to talk about MLA here for citing. All right. There's two things to think about when it comes to citing in text. All right. Citing in text for MLA. And citing in text is the kind of the one that I care about. I like that you have a works cited page. That's awesome. But, you know, let's work on our in text citations. First off direct quotes, second, paraphrasing, all right? So let's say you've got a book, all right? You have a quote that you want to cite from this book, and you're going to use MLA. The author's last name is Fenn, F-E-N-N. -N. What you're going to want to do is as soon as that quote is over, so let's say it's one sentence long, let's say it's from page 75, you're going to want to have a parenthetical right? So the, the parentheses around it. And you're going to want to have the author's last name, so Fenn, and page number, 75. That will happen after a quote or within a sentence in which you're going to paraphrase something. So if there's something here that you want to try to restate, but you don't want to quote it directly, you're going to, again, put it in parentheses and have Fenn, 75. The big thing when it comes to in-text citations is within or at the end of the sentence in which you use something, you have to give a reference. Meaning, it can't be at the end of the paragraph or a works cited page. That doesn't count. It's technically cheating. Okay? So, within the sentence or at the end of the sentence in which you use something, you want to make reference to it. For books, again, author's last name and page number, good to go. Now, the second thing when it comes to, to citing, again, is making sure that you get your paraphrases right. A paraphrase is not dropping one or two words from a sentence from a book and then writing the rest of the sentence out and then having a citation behind. That's not paraphrasing, that's quoting poorly, and we don't want to do that. Paraphrases should not have more than one or possibly two words from something you got from a source. The idea is there's a specific thing from the source that you can't remember without rephrasing and then having to cite it. And so that's really where that comes in. Third, plagiarism. Okay. No one likes this. I don't like it. I know no one else here does. 
plagiarism is right the theft of the ideas or the direct words that would be in a source like this it can be intentional or unintentional meaning if you miss a comma on a citation but you have everything else right technically for some faculty members that's cheating if you miss a comma every now and again we're okay there's intent or there's you know again misconstruing it or messing it up a little bit so i usually am focused on folks that struggle with this and come at it from the perspective of intent but again if you are unsure of how to cite if you think that it's okay to copy and paste stuff from a website or from this or from anything it's not you can't even copy and paste right this is the college level you can't even copy and paste from your textbook and try to pass it off as well right that's not okay uh, particularly at a one or two hundred level last thing consequences in our class I try to have a three strikes and you're out policy the first time a incident happens what usually occurs is I try to reach out to a student if I think there's a problem and I'll ask if they would if they're aware you know that there may be a problem here that usually gives folks an opportunity to look something over and if they recognize oh yeah oops I made a mistake there you know maybe we can talk about how to work to correct it but typically what happens is this again first time I catch there's an incident 50% uh, on the assignment second time zero third time you're out all right you would uh, fail the class uh, and and you would you know you would you would fail now for every time that happens I have to submit a form to the college where this whole process goes on your academic record. Now, no one wants that to happen, okay? So if paper writing isn't your thing, if you're unsure of what to do, of how to proceed, of how to go forward, of you've never had to do a discussion board and you don't understand why you have to cite even though it's from your textbook, reach out to me. The point of me being here is that I can help you through the process. It is not my goal to be combative. It is my goal to help you to be able to get to where you want to go. Thank you very much. If you have questions or concerns, you can email me, reach out to me. I want everyone to be successful in the class. Thanks.